Bobbish. Welcome to the talk of Olaf Klinke about self-documenting uh, computation. Um, Olaf Klinke is a mathematician and data <coughs> scientist, and he loves functional languages and does um, Haskell. Um, yeah, enjoy his talk. Thanks for, uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to present something here. Uh, is, is that okay if I speak without a microphone? Yeah. Can everybody understand me? Okay. Uh, well, next, apologies for the window frame. It looks like the uh, adapter cuts off some of the screen, so I can't go to, uh, to full screen on the, on the laptop, but I, I hope that's uh, large enough anyways. Um, so I'd like to start with uh, sort of a motivating example. What I'm going to um, read out to you is sort of um, uh, um, a dialogue that I had with, with someone. Um, and this is sort of what, what uh, got this project going. So um, I'm working for a company and we're writing invoices. So we're funneling some, some uh, money coming in and it's going out and uh, so I'm, I'm generating invoices uh, and so uh, I, was, I was generating an invoice um, and the other side said well okay we uh, thanks for that but we need to um, be sure that you calculated it right so please uh, um, we need some way of, of doing that uh, and so I said well um, now it's a computer generated thing and I did some checks on it and uh, I'm, I'm sure it's correct and they said, well, that's fine. Can I have a look at the spreadsheet file? And then I said, um, there is no spreadsheet file. Um, and then uh, on the other side of the phone, there was a silence. Uh, and they said, well, OK, um, how did you do it then? And I said, well, I used this fancy language. So I, I deliberately put some, some uh, some variable there, so you can fill in whatever you like uh, best. Um, uh, and they insisted, of course, well, I, I never used your fancy language, so uh, I cannot verify that your, that your algorithm is correct. So uh, please send us some, some documentation so that we can verify step by step that you know, your calculations are correct. And so um, this is how um, this all got going, so um, you should be, or this, um, you should take something home from this presentation. Um, if you have some data transformations that are non-trivial, so it's a bit more than addition, summation, uh, uh, division, or whatever, um, and if your calculations um, must be verifiable by some human being that is not computer literate. Uh, so you cannot just show them the source code of your of your program, um, and you can only make minimal assumptions about the capabilities they have on their side. So it's basically just reading a document. You know, accountants they they want some piece of paper in their hands that they can go and check and and do whatever with it. Um, and so it needs to be in, in human readable form, basically. Uh, oh yes, uh, no, um, the, the data should be in human readable form. Okay, so um, there's a, I'm going to give a couple of demos and uh, this is the toy example that, um, that I'm going to use. So um, our company is sort of a <coughs> platform provider. So we own some infrastructure and there's some customers and they, they generate something uh, through the platform that is uh, of some value. And uh, every month, um, the, the quantities differ slightly, and um, the, uh, uh, the value of each unit is different for every customer, so there's a, a couple of weights. Uh, and in the end, this is, this is sort of uh, symbolizing the, um, uh, uh, the amount that uh, each customer gets on their invoice. So uh, we, we get some, some revenue in, and everyone gets a share. And of course, uh, each of those customers wants to know I get my rightful share um, of this of this uh, incoming revenue, uh, and so um, we're we're going to have uh, some I/O. So um, there's some some database that uh, records the the, the quantity um, number of units uh, produced every month, 
and um, we do have some configuration. Let's say uh, we have a um, just a, a CSV file that says um, <coughs> which customer produces uh, um, uh, uh, which which uh, uh, what is the the unit value for each of these things. And in the end, I want to produce some some invoice that I can show to the customer and say here. Uh, these are the, the, the basic uh, figures, and um, now this is the amount of, uh, uh, this is the, your share that you'll get. Okay, so um, how to do that with spreadsheets? So that's the, the first thing I'm going to show you. Um, so I will have, here's a spreadsheet file. So uh, we're going to have, um, for customers, they're called A, B, and A, B, C, and D. Um, and there's some weights. So the customer A produces, uh, each unit has the value five, uh, customer B has the value eight, and so on. So um, I just put it into um, uh, one, one uh, um, sheet of the, of the spreadsheet file. Um, of course, what I could do, um, at least Excel, I think, is capable of that. You can you can bind that to a, a database call or uh, uh, just uh, import uh, uh, the CSV file or whatever. Now, this is actually the the thing that's sort of the uh, another I/O call, so to say. So again, you would not just uh, type that into a spreadsheet file, um, although this is actually something that that we also do. Um, at our company, so there's uh, the, the invoices that are coming in, they're on paper, and so somebody has to go in and, and copy the number into, into the system so that it's, it's computer readable. Um, so another thing is the database, so um, uh, the quantity <coughs> provided for this month that we want to uh, generate the invoice for, uh, just some figures. Again, you would you would maybe use some ODBC to to actually attach this uh, uh, spreadsheet to uh, a database and automatically reload the right numbers for the for the month that you're going to do. Uh, and in the end, um, we're going to have some some uh, sheet where we actually do some calculations. And so, in which way is this a self-documenting computation? Well. Um, Accountants are used to reading um, spreadsheets, and so what you can do is you can click on some cell, and um, up here in this bar, you're going to see a formula. Um, and so what you can also do, it's a kind of nice thing, well, where is it? Let me find it, it's the detective. We can say trace the precedence. And so you can see that uh, the cell A5 depends on uh, the four cells in row 2. And then you can do things like, okay, where does this go? Um, let's use this again. You can say trace dependence. And you can see, okay, so this value is used in those cells. Sorry. And so on. Did, you didn't know that? No, I don't. We have totally. <laughs> 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 we have one guy in our company who is a, an, an Excel wizard, and I, I did a little course with him. So this is this is one of the things that I, that I kind of liked uh, about it. But uh, um, actually, this this is as much as you can get. So um, of course, this example is 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 pretty basic, and so um, you would need this kind of tracing stuff uh, for understanding what's happening. Um, but um, I'm sure that you, that you don't want to um, yeah, Im imagine your algorithm is a bit more complicated or maybe you're using some data that goes beyond tables uh, and then probably you do, don't want to use this. So let's go back to the presentation. So what's my verdict? Um, so everybody uses spreadsheets in the office world. Um, they're interactive. You can go, so one of the nice things you can do is um, I can go back to this one and say, well, you know, what happened if this customer actually produced only the quantity 100? And the calculation updates itself and it updates the figures and so on. So, so that's kind of nice. So people can look at this and, and experiment with it uh, and, and see, you know, test the algorithm a little bit and, and play around with it. So, that's definitely a pro. Um, 
you have the intermediate values here, so you can you can decide yourself how complicated your formulas should be and uh, um, and and structure the intermediate uh, uh, values. Yeah. Um, I have never done this, but I don't know whether there's anyone in this room who's ever tried to debug other people's Excel sheets. Um, I heard that it's, it becomes kind of horrible, and if you want to do more complicated stuff, then you have to resort to, to uh, Visual Basic, and, and that's some uh, completely uh, separate uh, problem then. Um, and the data model in spreadsheets is, of course, kind of limited, so if, if something isn't a table, then you're, you're on your own, right? Okay, um, now I want to show you another thing. Um, which is called Haskintech. It's a uh, it's a, um, a, a Haskell library, um, and it's sort of a mixing of computation and documentation. <coughs> so let's go to the source. So I have a file. Uh, it's got the extension H T A T E X, and it's um, what. So what you hear. So I have to tell the. Um, um, so if I say it's a LaTeX file, no, there should be some. Ah, yeah. Now we, we get some colors in here. So um, I, I just write a um, uh, a Haskell uh, a LaTeX source code. I have some sections. I say. Uh, um, I uh, uh, define the, the structure of the document. And then I can sprinkle in some code here. Now I have, uh, so this one here is an environment that says, um, in here is some Haskell code, and this is also doing some I.O. actions, and it returns a, a, a LaTeX value, um, which is then sort of inlined into the, into the, um, into the LaTeX source. Um, and so here at the bottom, I put now the, the Haskell code that sits behind it, which does the data shoveling and so on. So now let's switch um, here. So I get some, some different uh, uh, um, inlining. So I have a, I have a, a type for customer, um, which is A, B, C, or D. Now if you listen to the last talk, you, you see this. It's an algebraic data type. Um, and now I, uh, I load some data, and I, so I, I'm faking here accessing real databases, so it's not really a database, I'm, I'm pulling everything from files uh, here. Uh, and so there's just some, some uh, um, so my, my business logic is, is just put in here. Um, so now what can I do with it? Um, so I have... I've written a little shell script, which, um, let's see, go back to this one, no, where is it, here, um, I had a, all right, here, so uh, in the Haskell code, I, I have a sort of a, a variable again, uh, I want to generate um, a, uh, an invoice for each of the customers, A, B, C, and D. Um, so what the uh, script does, it replaces this variable by uh, something, um, by some real value, that's a Haskell value, and um, it um, saves a copy of this thing then and, and runs it through Haskintech. So let's do that. Um, so apologies, um, this machine is 12 years old and it has about a quarter of the computing capabilities of your phone, so it takes a while. Um, but uh, so what it does now, um, for each of the, uh, the places in the LaTeX file where I said, now here's some Haskell code, it, it uh, basically well, starts a Haskell environment and executes this and sees what's, uh, what's coming out of it. Um, and in the end, I will get a uh, normal LaTeX file with all the uh, Haskell code replaced by its output. So, let's see. 
So here you can see now I put uh, the verbose mode on, so now it's evaluating this expression. Um, it uses a sandbox environment uh, where I have uh, the, the LaTeX available and um, it's just going through, through all the states. So let's go back to it. Um, let's see. Yep, it's generated one of those things already. For customer A, we have the file already, and so how does it look like? So I, I didn't put much effort into, into how it looks like, but uh, now it, it, it got the data, uh, um, and it, it's generating something, and here is the, the number uh, that the customer is allowed to see. Okay, so that's kind of nice, but we're limited to, to LaTeX. And uh, doing I.O. in this is um, is not really easy. So um, multiple I.O. calls and, and having things that depend on uh, some other uh, calls is not that easy, but um, I still use uh, Haskin Tech in, in production. So when you don't use I.O., it's, it's a really nice thing to do. So you can have a a static LaTeX document and it does some, some computation. Uh, when you do more complicated stuff, then you can use also um, uh, something like HayTech um, directly, which is sort of the, the um, duality between documentation within code as opposed to code within documentation. Okay. Um, now there's another thing that I wanted to show you, which is iHaskell. So it's a, it's a notebook. Uh, iHaskell is a, a really amazing thing. It, it's, uh, it can do a, a lot of stuff. It, can do, it has graphics capabilities. Um, when I compiled it on this machine, it depends on 200 Haskell packages. So it's also quite large, but uh, it, it's capable of doing a lot. So how does that look like? Um, so I'm, I'm writing a notebook. Which again, um, you, you uh, let's see, I have to make this a bit smaller. Uh, yeah, you can see everything. So um, you see the same kind of code. I'm defining some functions and so on and so on. Um, and now, um, so there's uh, bits of uh, documentation in here, which I can, it is basically marked down. Um, and then I have uh, bits of, of code. And then I can uh, click in here and run. Uh, I run shift. What? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Thank you. Uh, so I first run this one, and now I have all the functions here in scope. I run that one. Uh, now it generates some figures, and then I can go on and do this. Um, then here's another I.O. call, it gets that one. Um, and now in here, I'm also cheating and say, okay, now for, the, for this one here, I want customer A. Um, now, whoops, execute that one. Um, and then I have this weighted sales that you know from the Excel file. And now here's something to show off um, you can quite easily um, put some nice graphics in here. So uh, that's, that's kind of easy to do. Um, I, I stole the code of some example of iHaskell. Um, and in the very end, you get uh, the final output. And I, can, I could now say, um, uh, what, how was it? Um, I can save as, um, no, I can e export this to PDF or HTML quite easily, but then I get a, a static document, so I lose the, uh, uh, the interactive nature. So if I, want to, um, if I want someone to be able to play around with this, they need to install um, uh, the entire machinery. So um, 
So they're really intuitive to work with, to get things done. They're interactive if you have the, the, the backend installed. They have graphics capabilities, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, I mentioned export to some, some uh, document formats. Um, something that's not as nice is um, uh, you cannot reference data cells from Markdown cells, as, as, at least as far I know. So um, what I did here, I have some hyperlinks in here that take me somewhere else, but I, I did them manually. Okay, um, yeah, and they're only interactive as long as you have the, uh, the backend installed. Okay, um, and so since all these three things that I showed you didn't quite fit the bill or fit my use case, I created a package on my own. The philosophy is that uh, documentation is only a small part of an actual application. Um, and the computation itself and the, the, the checking, the verification happen on different machines. Yeah? I do the computation and my counterpart in, in bookkeeping is, is doing the verification. Um, I also want the, the usual algorithm be extractable when I want to test it to, through quick check or whatever, so something like a notebook isn't really the thing I, I, I can use. Um, and I want to automatically track the data flow. So this is something like what, what the spreadsheets do. Um, okay, so here's how it works. So suppose you have an algorithm that um, works by composing two functions and applying that to some input data x. So you have a piece of data A, you have a function uh, f and a function b. Um, and so what I do uh, in this package is I would register this as a, a variable, saying now here's uh, some piece of in intermediate data, then I have um, uh, an edge in a graph going to the next intermediate data f of x, and then I'm, I have another, um, another edge in the graph um, recording the final output g of f of x. Um, and in this graph, because I don't have a, a um, because Haskell doesn't um, allow me to put arbitrary data in, into some, um, into some uh, common data structure, um, all the uh, labels and the nodes in this graph are markup. Um, you can uh, generate this markup automatically via some, some type classes, or you can just write it yourself. Okay, so um, if I have a function that uh, um, takes some data of type A and it performs some side effects, uh, let's say I O and gives you back some B, then um, you, uh, you transform it into a function that takes the, the data A, it gives you back the data B, but it also transforms some state, and the state is the graph of data dependencies. And it also gives you back um, the node ID um, of the data B where it is recorded in this graph. Um, so that's, that's basically all there is. So I'm, I'm just plugging together um, standard components, standard libraries that, that uh, everybody can use in, in Haskell. So you have this, this Mona transformer library, uh, you have um, a graph library, and, and that's basically all you need. Okay, so um, then you'll have a little kind of um, um, sort of domain-specific language. So you have some building blocks, how to build these, um, um, these, uh, uh, these monadic values. So you have a, a function called var, which registers a variable, which says this piece of data is some, some intermediate uh, data that I, want to, that I want others to see. Um, I have um, a render function which says now take this data and, and actually put a, a, a markdown presentation of it into the data dependency graph. Um, I have um, another thing that puts a description at a separate place um, into the graph. So uh, you're supposed to write some yeah, in, in, in human readable sentences what, what actually the data is, what it does, um, and then last you have a, um, an apply function, which says um, take this annotated function 
and this annotated data and now apply the function to the data, giving me something else. Okay, so um, next I'm going to show you the code, how it looks like in the provenience monad. So this is just some plain Haskell code. Um, now here's the algorithm, um, how it would look like if I didn't do, if I didn't use this library. Okay, so what I do is I, I do three I.O. calls I have uh, some, um, some intermediate stuff where I just uh, uh, basically multiply the sales numbers with the weights. Um, then I um, uh, uh, divide everything by the total value, by the total, um, yeah, by the total to get relative numbers. And then I, um, I multiply the, the revenue with the shares and, uh, and that's basically it. Okay, um, now, this is how the same looks like in the provenience thing. So you see there's quite a bit more code to write. But this is because I'm now providing information. So um, I again have three I.O. calls. They're up here. Then I have to name the variables. Um, now I, um, here I'm applying some function which has a description to some variables that are already recorded, uh, simply already running off the screen. Um, and again, I'm, um, I'm having a function here that I'm uh, applying some um, human readable description for and applying that to some variables. I'm naming the intermediate stuff. Again, some function application, and this is just bookkeeping here. I'm, I'm just providing description. And that's it. Um, so I loaded this one into GHCI. So um, what I did in the end is I have a write invoice function. So let's do that. Let's um, write an invoice for customer A. So now it um, hopefully has generated an HTML file because uh, I said that demo invoice a HTML here it is okay so how does it look like um, so every variable that I register um, this is now just a bit of style uh, with a little bit of CSS so um, we have the component, um, a name that I provided. Um, here's the rendering of the actual value. Here's the description. And what gets automatically inserted is um, the, the edges. So I get hyperlinks and say, well, where is this used? Well, this is used here. Uh, OK, where does this come from? Uh, it's used here. So I've got the, the incoming and outgoing edges for every node in the graph is automatically generated. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. So the, the hyperlinks that I generated myself is so, so I can I can um, do the um, the description uh, can also um, have hyperlinks from somewhere, so I can go back here and there. Um, and I should mention um, all this uses Pandoc, so I could my, I I might just as well say I want a PDF document instead of an HTML document. Or whatever, so um, you can use this. You can extract the the, um, the data flow graph as a as a bunch of uh, uh, Pandoc values, um, and uh, there's a, a function in the library that says, well, okay, generate a Pandoc document out of it, generating all these links and whatever, and then you say, okay, now write a PDF, write a whatever you want. Okay, um, there's another thing, probably um, because this is just a static document. Um, you can also, where am I, here, uh, as a side effect, uh, there's al always a um, alternative representation. So um, in the code, I, I um, just said this, this should be nothing, but where are we? Uh, here. 
So I can also say, in addition to the Pandoc documentation, write some, you, uh, some, some machine readable representation of the data. So let's go back to that. Okay, let's do that again. And now I should have, let's see. Uh, now I have a CSV file, which basically contains the same kind of rendering of the uh, of the data, of the actual data. So you can also do a, a spreadsheet, which then just uh, uh, stay here. That's too slow. So, uh, and then someone can load this into their spreadsheet and they can also experiment around with this or whatever. Okay, so, so much for the demos. Um, now here is something, um, this is how I would really like to do it, but I, I don't know how to do it really. So I have, a, um, uh, I have the, the Haskell uh, level where I have a function transforming data A into data B, um, and I have the let's say the, the HTML level where I now have a rendering of, of the data A as some, some HTML, and this always static. Um, if I could, I would um, make every input variable that doesn't depend on anything else into a form which is pre-filled with, uh, with the actual data that, that was computed. Um, and then the function f would compile to something like JavaScript, maybe. Um, and then I can go into the form and change the data. And um, the JavaScript changes the representation of the output um, so that the entire thing becomes interactive. Um, but I don't know how to compile chunks of Haskell into JavaScript and together with all this marshalling, probably you need a uh, uh, JSON to, to marshal everything. So there's this package Fay. Um, I know maybe somebody has heard of it. Maybe something is possible. So if you have an idea how to do this, come talk to me, please. Uh, yeah, and that was my last slide. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Are there any questions? Yeah. So initially you mentioned that um, accountants like to look at Excel spreadsheets and the formulas, um, which is true. Uh, and presumably they also understand like what formula, what the formulas can do, right? Mm -hmm. You have like software product. Uh, what you have now, um, you, uh, as Pyre understood correctly, uh, um, you have full power of Haskell. Like you can do arbitrary computation. That's right. Um, and um, I was wondering if you have looked into providing a, like, basically cloning the Excel form formula language mm -hmm. so that you can now also provide Excel formulas. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm sure this is a big task, but I was just wondering if that's, uh, if that's, uh, if that's something you have considered. Um, there's one person in this room who did this already. So you could, you could say, okay, I limit myself to everything that a spreadsheet formula can do. Uh, and then you could, you could uh, generate interactive spreadsheets. Right. Um, but then again, you're limited to this one kind of output format, probably. And I don't want to lose the expressiveness of Haskell right. for this. Who's the person in the room with this? Uh, he sits back there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. that was another question. Good question, but I was wondering um, concerning this uh, uh, trying to add some more interaction to this. Whether you can, whether you try to embed these um, HTML and uh, CSV renderings as an output output cell in this uh, I has called you because know, so, then you would have the chance mm -hmm. to maybe. Uh, um, to kind of interact 
I think Pandoc even has a writer uh, filter for uh, for uh, Jupyter notebooks or something like this. I've, I've seen that. Um, but again, having this thing interactive means that um, uh, the other side has to have the the backend installed. Yeah, so it's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they need to have some software which they probably don't have out of the box yes. for, for having so this. So the it would be just for your use yes. in creating these mm. systems. Mm. You have a tighter interaction yeah. that yeah. you can really say. Is that, is that possible or is that human? It, it might be possible, yes. So I, I have definitely haven't looked at all the possibilities of having some kind of interactive code. So maybe there, there's some, some format that I haven't seen. Uh, uh, that makes this easier. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Uh, so, did you try to teach an accountant so that you have kind of interprets this as a DSL to, to so that an accountant can use this? To I'm, I'm using this in production. Yes, I, I haven't uh, shown you something, but uh, there's some some. Yeah, but uh, in the sense that an accountant is not able to program. Oh uh, <laughs> no! The idea is really that that um, yeah, so somebody goes and, and writes the Haskell code that does the actual calculations. But then, um, again, I'm, I'm wrapping this in, let's say, a web server or something like this. So you could, you could uh, say, okay, through the web interface, you say, load this data and perform this calculation, and it spits you out, let's say, the, the Excel file together with the, uh, some HTML or some PDF or whatever. And so the, because the idea is the documentation is only a small part of, of the actual application that you Are your accountants happy? Do they like it? Well, uh, the nice thing is that it's not our accountants who need to look at this. Yeah. So definitely, because um, <laughs> it's, it's the other side. Um, uh, so they, they said something like, uh, well, I, I need uh, some, some time to uh, adapt to reading this. And they were definitely happy when I added the, the Excel sheet export feature. Uh, <laughs> um, but, um, the system is flexible. The, the styling can be made on top, so it's, it's probably not the, the, um, the nicest way to present these kinds of things. You could think about uh, maybe really rendering a graph rather than just a topological sorting of the nodes uh, and all these kinds of things. There's still time for questions? No more questions? No. Thank you.